I'm Dr. John, and this is your Maintenance Minute. I've uh, got a very important message for you today. We're going to talk about preventive maintenance optimization, or PMO. And I want to sort of give you my impression of it and tell you a little bit of the background I had. Several years ago, probably 10, maybe 8 to 10 years ago, I was invited out to Raleigh uh, Marshall Institute World Headquarters out in Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, there's a gentleman named Steve Turner that came over from Australia. Now, now, Steve did not invent PMO. I don't believe he did, but he was certainly one of the early pioneers. And he was going to teach a class for four people, exactly four people. Uh, Del Bland, who was the owner at the time of Marshall Institute. Greg Foltz, who at the time was the president of Marshall Institute. And Tracy Strawn, who was the vice president of Marshall Institute, and myself. Now, Del, Greg, and Tracy are good friends of mine, colleagues. Uh, unfortunately, Dell has passed away several years ago. Tracy has retired. He's sort of emeritus status now. So Greg and I are still the two, uh, as far as that we're in that class, that are sort of still in, in action right now. But Steve was over there teaching us about this new idea. It's called preventive maintenance optimization. I'd never heard of it. I'm sure Dale and Greg and Tracy had, uh, had heard about it. But, but uh, Steve had come over to train us on this new concept of preventive maintenance optimization. And i got to tell you, I was completely blown away. At the time, see, I've been in maintenance and reliability for 36 years now, so let's just say it was 10 years ago. So for 26 years, I, almost, I had no idea what I was doing in terms of putting together really effective and efficient PMs until Steve sort of essentially you know, lifted the scales from my eyes. So Steve taught us on this preventive maintenance optimization, and then a few weeks later, I, I, feel, I think I was probably the first person to do a PMO, which is a PMO workshop, probably in all of you know, the United States, I guess. I, I went down to Trinidad and uh, taught a class on just a few weeks after this training, taught a PMO workshop, and it went fairly well. You know, we, so we didn't really know what we were doing. But over the years, I've gathered, I think, a really good um, appreciation and certainly a really good practice for executing these PMO workshops. Let me just real quickly tell you why we even do a preventive maintenance uh, optimization or PMO. We have a requirement from SMRP, and here's what it states. I'm, I'm going to read this right out of the body of knowledge. It says that we're required to do regular review of these plans, essentially preventive and predictive strategies. Uh, regular review of these plans is necessary as well as equipment performance against expectations, and it goes on to say adjust plans is necessary. Now, the tool that we use so when I read a standard that says regular review, to me that says at least annually, maybe more frequently, but at least annually. So if you'll allow me to read into the intent here, annually we're required to review the PM predictive strategies that we're employing against our equipment, against failures and um, failures that are coming on. The tool that we use is preventive optimization. Now there's three things we could do, probably three very well-known methodologies or tools that we could use. One is failure mode and effects analysis, FMEA. I know you're familiar with that. We'll talk about that later in another video. There's also reliability-centered maintenance. Again, we'll speak about that in the later videos, but there's RCM, right? And then there's PMO. If, if you're building a brand new plant and a brand new facility, in fact, 12, probably 12 or 15 miles from my house here is a plant that I was instrumental in building. It's a huge plant and all the equipment. In it. And so we use the practice of FMEA. If you're building a green site facility with equipment, you're going to use failure modes and effect analysis. Essentially, what could possibly go wrong? If you're building a brand new asset, like a brand new machine or a brand new airplane, the methodology you're going to employ for a maintenance strategy is reliability-centered maintenance. But if you already have an existing plant, existing equipment, and existing failure history, the tool that you're going to use is preventive maintenance optimization. And what we're doing there is we're trying to keep the things that have kept our butt in the past, quite honestly, keep those things from ever happening again. In preventive maintenance optimization, what we're doing is we're aligning our maintenance strategy against the failures we've already had. And we're trying to keep those from ever happening again, or certainly keep those from surprising us, if you will. They, the, the failure may still happen, of course, but we're going to detect it and we're going to be able to make a business decision based on whatever the circumstances or the context of our operation happens to be. So in preventive maintenance optimization, or you might consider it a review of existing maintenance, we're going to see if our preventive maintenance and predictive maintenance, if they're effective, they're efficient. And what we're likely to find is there's a percentage of tasks that we can move over to the operator, make it sort of an autonomous maintenance and get the operator engaged in the care of his or her equipment. 
There are also PM tasks that we can delete outright. They have no relevance, they have no value, they're basically just CYA type PM tasks, and we just can get rid of those. Free up more availability of the equipment. There are also PM tasks that we need to better define. It might say check the bearing. That, that, that's not much of a definition. I want a PM task that says what to do, how to do it, what does good look like, and what to do if it's bad, and then any safety steps. There's five elements in my PM task. We're also likely to extend frequencies on PMs. They're really good PM tasks. We want to extend them a little bit, or you might be able to, you might want to shorten the frequency based again on whatever the failure that we're seeing. I can tell you the hardest part about preventive maintenance optimization, in fact, the hardest part about FMEA and the hardest part about RCM and the hardest part about preventive maintenance optimization is the development of what's called a failure mode. How did the failure manifest itself? Uh, for example, uh, the number one failure of a bearing is uh, bearing C due to lack of proper lubrication. That is a failure mode. X failed due to Y reason. Once you establish a real good process for creating these failure modes, you will create a really good maintenance strategy against that failure mode. And here's the key to PMO. And I'd probably say it's the key to FMEA and RCM as well. One failure mode one task against. One failure mode, one task against. What we're going to do is we're going to execute preventive maintenance optimization workshops as the tool that we use for SMRP's requirement for regular review of our maintenance plans and adjust the plan as necessary. That's how we're going to do that. We're going to use a PMO workshop, which typically lasts three to five days, depends on the complexity of the asset, of course. So preventive maintenance optimization is also uh, can be considered a review of existing maintenance. We're going to bring into alignment our failure history and the PMs that we currently have against it. You'll probably find that you've got PMs that you never find any failures. You never see anything. These are the tasks typically sort of pencil whipped or completed in the break room or in the maintenance shop. You also have some PM tasks uh, for which you don't have, uh, not only have you never seen a failure, but they're very inefficient and ineffective when you do them. So you may actually see other sorts of circumstantial failures, but you can't point back to that specific PM. So we've got failures, or we've got PMs that we never see anything, and then we also have PMs that we do, but the co component's still failing in some way or another. We also have some failures for which we don't have a PM task, and those are the ones we need to cover as well. So in our PM workshop, we may be creating new tasks as well. One failure mode, one task against. Preventive maintenance optimization. By the way, the word optimize, we need to understand what that means. To me, it means make it the best that it can be. However, whatever comes out of that workshop this year, in three to five years, I expect it to be slightly different. We don't optimize something once and we're done. Optimizing uh, is a continuous thing. In fact, it's part of continuous improvement. So I hope you've gained a little bit on this conversation about preventive maintenance optimization. I'd love to have an opportunity to talk to you about it, but this is John Ross, and this has been your Maintenance Minute.